C-R-I-T-T trolling that one code though. I just don't want to pay that much for it. Oh, wait. Looks like the filter. Good morning, kind people of the internet. Today, I just finished this book by Sam Harris called Free Will. And it is actually pretty short. It is about 60, 66 pages. Um, so if you're not familiar with Sam Harris, um, I stumbled upon him um, in, I think originally in some podcasts, maybe in the Tim Ferriss podcast, but uh, he actually has his own podcast now as well as his own meditation app, which I haven't tried yet, but I'm curious to check it out. Um, so Sam Harris is um, a writer and also I guess you would call him a scientist. He has a uh, degree in philosophy from Stanford University and a PhD in neuroscience from UCLA. Um, and so now he's, he does a lot of writing, he's written quite a few books and um, does a lot of other stuff. And um, so I was curious to read this book, this is his, the first book of his that I've read and I guess I just wanted to start with it because I knew it was short and he's He's a pretty obviously intelligent guy and gets very deep into his topics. So I, you know, I'm always a little bit worried about this, some of this stuff being over my head. So I thought I would give this one a try. And for the most part, I feel like I was able to understand um, just about everything he was talking about in this book. Um, I think it was a fairly fast and easy read, although he does go fairly in depth with what he's talking about. And so I felt like I could stop every few pages and really think on each particular topic in a lot more depth, although I haven't really done that quite yet, but um, it still has given me a good grasp on his viewpoint on free will, which is that he doesn't believe free will exists. And um, I think before I started the book, I personally thought that free will did exist, although the way I was thinking about it was in a slightly different way than how he presents what it is, which makes more sense, I think, if you actually think about it. So Sam's basic premise is that we do not have control over our own thoughts and um, impulses that come to us. So say, for instance, you get up in the morning and you say, I'm gonna go to the grocery store. Well, most people would say, well, maybe not most people, a lot of people might say, I'm choosing to go to the grocery store, therefore, um, that is my own free will allowing me to choose to go to the grocery store. But Sam would say this thought to go to the grocery store is popping up in your brain and you're not the one choosing to or forcing it to pop up. Um, it's just appearing there and it's going to show up in your brain whether you want it to or not. So that leads to the question of 
um, what he talks about a lot in the book, which is crime. So if people are committing a certain crime, you know, are these thoughts just popping up and they don't get to choose them, um, which may mean that they don't ultimately have control over their actions or, um, or do they have control? So even if you were to choose, say, um, when you wake up and you think, oh, I should go to the grocery, but then you say, no, instead of going to the grocery, I'm going to go to the gym. Well, the idea of the gym also just popped up in your head um, and you didn't choose to have that thought, it just, the thought came to you. So it's, it's not um, a, f a thought that you are choosing freely, but the thought would arrive on its own no matter what. So this definition or sort of concept of free will I don't really think is how most people think of it. And I know that I certainly didn't, but um, it's, man, it's really quite something to wrap your head around once you really start thinking about it. Um, you know, thoughts are always coming to us, but it's, it's really more about how we react to them um, rather than us choosing what our own thoughts and impulses are, which I think is probably where meditation sort of comes into the picture and can be really helpful. So my sort of understanding of how meditation helps, although I haven't done it too much yet, is that we always have thoughts sort of bombarding our brains and they're always like coming in, but we don't have to actually grab hold of them and engage with each particular thought. We can let it sort of float by, almost just like a cloud in the sky just continues to go by us and it will allow us to keep ourselves from getting bogged down mentally. Um, because everybody always has these like impulses shooting through, but it's, it's our choice to actually engage with any particular thought. So for me, Sam's concept of the lack of free will is really interesting. And I definitely think that I need to give it a little more thought myself, no pun intended. So I would definitely recommend giving this book a try yourself if this is something that interests you. And I definitely look forward to checking out more of Sam's work in the future because I think he has um, some good ideas and um, is definitely thinking on a level that I haven't necessarily tried to do, I guess I would say. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time.